The Chang'e 6 mission is a lunar exploration mission conducted by the China National Space Administration, CNSA. The mission aims to reach the South Pole Aitken Basin on the far side of the moon and collect samples from the lunar surface. The entire process, from rocket launch to the return of lunar samples to Earth, spans 53 days. This marks the world's first mission to collect and return samples from the lunar far side. The scientific objectives, engineering goals, and overall mission process of the Chan'e-6 mission have garnered widespread attention. Scientific objectives of the mission include on-site investigation and analysis of the lunar far side landing area, lunar topography and geomorphology exploration, and geological background surveys, aiming to discover and collect samples from different regions and ages of the lunar far side for analysis and research. Engineering objectives of the mission involve breakthroughs in lunar retrograde orbit design and control technology, lunar far side intelligent sampling technology, and lunar far side takeoff and ascent technology achieving automatic sampling return from the lunar far side while conducting effective international cooperation. The Chan'e-6 mission requires coordination among the probe system, launch vehicle system, launch and recovery system, measurement and control system, and ground application system. The Chan'e-6 mission mainly consists of 11 flight stages, which are launch and orbit insertion, Stage Earth-Moon Transfer Stage, Lunar Orbit Insertion, Stage Circumlunar Flight Stage Descent, and Landing Stage Lunar Surface Operations, Stage Lunar Surface Ascent Stage Rendezvous and Docking with Sample Transfer Stage, Circumlunar Waiting Stage Lunar Earth Transfer Stage Re-Entry and Recovery Stage. During the whole process, it also involves the four components of the probe, lander, ascender, returner, and orbiter, with multiple separations and combinations. The first flight stage is the launch and orbit insertion stage. From the launch of the Chan'e-6 probe, after over 37 minutes of flight after blastoff, the rocket will place Chan'e-6 into the designated Earth-Moon transfer orbit, completing the separation of the spacecraft and the rocket. Afterward, Chan'e-6 proceeds to the second flight stage, also known as the Earth-Moon transfer phase, embarking on its journey toward the Moon. The entire voyage to the Moon takes approximately five days. As it approaches the Moon, it enters the third stage, the lunar orbit insertion phase. Lunar orbit insertion is a crucial orbital maneuver during Chan'e-6's flight. It involves a braking maneuver, akin to applying brakes to reduce Chan'e-6's uh, relative velocity below the moon's escape velocity, allowing it to be captured by lunar gravity and enter lunar orbit, thus achieving lunar circumnavigation. The first near-moon braking procedure presents a unique control opportunity. If missed, the probe can't enter the orbit of the moon. Completion of this stage smoothly is crucial for subsequent tasks like orbiting, landing, sampling, and takeoff to proceed. Following the near-moon braking is the circumlunar stage, the fourth stage. Unlike the Chan'e-5 mission, Chan'e-6 adopts a retrograde orbit. In the solar system, the major planets revolve around the sun in the direction of its rotation. Such orbits are called prograde orbits. The flight direction of the Chan'e-6 probe is opposite to the moon's rotation direction, which increases the relative speed between the probe and the moon, enabling better stability in a circumlunar orbit. The Chan'e-6 probe will fly in a circumlunar orbit for about 20 days. During this stage, one of the international payloads carried by the Chan'e-6 mission the Pakistan CubeSat and Chan'e-6 orbiter will separate near the far side lunar orbit's apogee on a 12-hour period large elliptical orbit. It will then conduct orbital imaging tasks to validate lunar satellite lunar orbit detection technology.
Meanwhile, with the support of the Chuechiao Relay Satellite, the Chang'e 6 probe will adjust the circumlunar orbit's altitude and inclination in preparation for lunar descent. The fifth stage is the descent and landing stage. After adjusting the orbit's altitude and position, Chang'e 6 will separate the orbiter returner combination and the lander ascender combination at the appropriate time. Subsequently, the lander ascender combination will perform a soft landing on the lunar far side. The primary task of Chang'e 6 is sample return making this the most crucial step before collecting lunar far-side samples. Chan U-6 not only needs to select a landing area of scientific value, but also consider the subsequent engineering implementation difficulties comprehensively. Additionally, like all spacecraft operating in space, Chan U-6 relies on solar panels for power generation. The potential landing site must be thoroughly assessed, considering various aspects such as sunlight availability to ensure the feasibility of the mission. The lunar far side is the side of the moon facing away from Earth. Because the moon's revolution and rotation times are synchronized, one side of the moon will never face Earth. The lunar far side has more complex landing terrain and challenging landing routes, before the Chan-6 uh, mission, humans had not conducted sample return missions on the lunar far side. Older lunar regolith may exist on the lunar far side. Regardless of the type of lunar regolith collected, the scientific value is expected to be high. Chan-6 uh, plans to land on the northeast side of the South Pole Aitken Basin, the oldest known impact basin in the solar system. This area is at mid-latitudes and is advantageous from various perspectives such as sunlight, energy, and communication, making it conducive to engineering implementation. Nevertheless, the landing descent of the Chan'e 6 mission will be full of challenges. The sixth stage is the lunar surface operation stage. After landing, the lander-ascender combination will use drilling and scooping to collect lunar regolith samples and package them. Chan'e 6 will spend 48 hours on the lunar surface completing lunar far-side sample collection. The international payloads carried by Chan'e 6, including the French instrument DORN, detection of outgassing radon, also called radon detector, the European Space Agency's NILs, negative ions on lunar surface, also called lunar surface negative ion analyzer, and the Italian NRRI, instrument for landing roving laser retroreflector investigations, also called laser angle reflector, will all be used on the lunar surface. The radon detector will conduct in situ measurements of lunar surface radon isotopes, studying the mechanisms of volatile transport and diffusion in the lunar environment. The radon detector can measure the radioactive decay of radon, which is a rare inert gas produced by radioactive materials. Radon is an ideal tracer for lunar degassing, providing energy to the lunar exosphere. The lunar exosphere is a very fragile dynamic atmosphere formed by degassing, solar wind, and micrometeoroid impacts. The radon detector will be the first French instrument brought on the moon surface. Radon has been detected in lunar orbit in the past, but never on the lunar surface. The French radon detector on this mission fills this gap, helping scientists understand particle transport on the lunar surface. The European Space Agency, ESA's Lunar Surface Negative Ion Analyzer, will detect negative ions on the lunar surface. Scientists have built models to predict that the solar wind, when it hits the surface of the moon, should cause sputtering and backscattering of lots of different types of particles. However, negative ions, particularly oxygen and hydrogen, have never been detected before. Scientists want to know if there are negative ions on the lunar surface, and if so, how many and what species of ions, so that they can refine their models and better understand the lunar environment. Italy's laser angle reflector, 
as an absolute control point on the lunar far side, can conduct joint ranging and positioning research with other lunar exploration missions, becoming a beacon on the moon. Undoubtedly, Chan'e 6 carries extremely high scientific expectations. After the ascender leaves, these instruments installed on the lander will continue to work. Chan'e 3 and Chan'e 4 carry their own isotope heat sources. Chan'e 6 should also have isotope heat sources to ensure these instruments are not frozen during the lunar night. The seventh stage is the lunar surface ascent stage. After completing lunar surface operations, the ascender will lift off from the lunar surface carrying lunar samples. Through four orbital maneuvers and employing a multi-loop, multi-pulse coplanar elliptical orbit rendezvous strategy, it will be guided to a circular orbit at an altitude of 210 kilometers, where it will rendezvous and dock with the orbiter-returner combination. Several uncertainties need to be considered during lunar ascent. For example, the ascender is typically not vertical to the lunar surface. The conditions of the lunar soil are also uncertain. Just one second after liftoff, its attitude must be automatically corrected. Due to the need for docking with the orbiter, the timing of liftoff must be extremely precise, just like launching a rocket requiring a zero-window liftoff. The lander will remain on the moon as a permanent resident. In the eighth stage, which is the rendezvous and docking with sample transfer stage, the ascender's task is like that of a delivery person, accurately delivering the lunar soil canister to the orbiter on the lunar orbit. Chan A6 adopts lunar orbit unmanned rendezvous and docking technology. Rendezvous and docking refer to two spacecraft flying in the same direction, with the chaser gradually catching up with the target until they dock. This is a complex and thrilling process. During docking, the ascender, as the target spacecraft, operates in a 210-kilometer high lunar orbit. It's like a runner on the outside track. The orbiter, as the chaser, operates in a 200-kilometer orbit like a runner on the inside track. The chaser approaches from the inside track to dock with the ascender. Another technically simpler option is to have the ascent vehicle lift off directly from the lunar surface and return to Earth. This means that the spacecraft would carry the fuel intended for returning to Earth to land on the lunar surface and then return. However, this would greatly limit the amount of samples that could be brought back. While rendezvous and docking technology is quite complex, retaining the fuel for returning to Earth in lunar orbit allows the spacecraft to bring back more samples. The reason for the orbiter catching up with the ascent vehicle during docking is also obvious. Besides the main propulsion engine, the orbiter is equipped with numerous attitude control thrusters. The docking process also requires a significant amount of fuel. All these equipment and propellants need to be installed and retained on the orbiter to operate in lunar orbit, thereby reducing the total mass brought to the lunar surface. Another technical detail is that Chan'e 6 will use a docking method similar to a berthing mode, rather than a docking method similar to a collision. The speeds of the two spacecraft are faster than bullets. Any deviation will result in the orbiter permanently losing the ascender. The implementation of this imaginative docking method will increase the success rate of docking. After the rendezvous and docking, lunar samples will be transferred from the ascender to the returner. The orbiter-returner combination will choose the timing to separate from the ascender and docking module, cruise in lunar orbit, and enter the ninth stage, the circumlunar waiting stage, waiting for the lunar Earth transfer window. At the scheduled time, it will accelerate into lunar Earth transfer orbit and begin the journey home. In the tenth stage, the lunar Earth transfer phase, after undergoing one to three mid-course corrections, the orbiter-returner combination reaches an altitude of approximately 5,000 kilometers from Earth, where the returner separates from the orbiter. In the final re-entry and recovery stage, the returner performs a semi-ballistic skip maneuver, 
decelerating from cosmic second speed to cosmic first speed, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, and landing in the designated landing area in Siziwang County, Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, China. This concludes the entire 53-day lunar farside mission. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Thank you for watching.